And we're back here on the GSMC Baseball Podcast, bringing you our third segment, which is going to be talking about Max Scherzer and his setback for the Texas Rangers, plus just a little bit of an outlook for this team. I want to talk about them, and I kind of had an excuse to now with Max Scherzer having a setback and uh, in his rehab. So I want to talk about that and then just kind of shift the conversation further to this overall Rangers team. So, yeah, definitely uh, excited to talk about that. So... With the Rangers right now, uh, I you know I did want to talk about Scherzer and his effect on the team. So Lincoln Scherzer right now, he did have a setback in his rehab to uh, get it specifically. Chris Young, who is the Rangers general manager, said that Max Scherzer has been shut down from throwing for a few days as he still has the thumb and forearm issue. There is no timetable, but Young said that Scherzer won't throw again until any tightness, until any tightness slash discomfort is gone. So basically, he's not pitching until he's healthy which is completely understandable, and I do agree with this decision by the Rangers. Now, Scherzer has been someone that obviously has been played by injuries in the past few years. We saw it with the Mets. We saw it last year with the Rangers, even after being there for half a season, and now now pitching this season. I think him coming back could be a big deal for the Rangers and really help them out. But so far, obviously, it is not going well for his rehab. With Scherzer right now, um, he did have the forearm issue, which is the reason why he is he was out for mo- he's out for the whole season so far, and is going to come back uh, probably a few weeks or maybe even a month later. So, with Scherzer, I think him coming back is going to help the Rangers, this Rangers team a lot. They've had a lot of pitching injuries. Of course, you have Jacob Degrom, who is one of the best pitchers in baseball when healthy, probably the best pitcher in baseball when healthy. I'd probably say now. Very excited to see him back on the bump, especially as a Mets fan. You know, I still do kind of miss him, uh, but nothing I can do about it now. He's gone, so just uh, excited to watch the Grom bump day again whenever he is back, and uh, you know, just uh, just watch him back when he is on the mound and pitching well. So that's something I'm excited about. But for Scherzer, I think when you look at again, when you look at all these pitching injuries, him himself included, the Grom, Tyler Malley, getting Scherzer back is going to be a huge upgrade for this Rangers team. You have a lot of good players in this rotation, yes, but you you know none of them are really, I'd say, up to the level of a fully healthy Scherzer is. Now, Scherzer in 2024 isn't the same guy as he was in 2019, 2020. Yes, has he dealt with some regression in these past few years? Absolutely. We've 100% seen it. I mean, it's been very obvious, especially, again, as someone who was a Mets fan. I watched him for two years in Queens was definitely regressing towards the end of it. He only has one year left in the Rangers contract, so I think if he continues to regress, he might he might be out of there, quote-unquote. So it's going to be very interesting to watch Scherzer and end up seeing what happens with him and this Rangers team. But I think bringing him back would be a big help to this rotation. One, someone I didn't mention on the injured list was Nathan Ivaldi. He did start for the Rangers this year healthy, but just went on the injured list a few uh, around a week ago, so... That's another big impact for the Rangers rotation. Overall, what I'm saying is Scherzer needs to come back and be a big help to the rotation. I mean, you're relying on guys now like John Gray, Dane Dunning, Andrew Heaney, who are just not guys you want to particularly rely on when you're in a division race. This Rangers team right now, they're first in the AL West with the Astros really struggling. A half game above, they're 22-17. and 17. Uh, Next close team in the Mariners, who is, again, a half game behind them. So I think that overall... It's going to be interesting to see what happens with this Rangers team and um, what is going to um, end up uh, just overall becoming of them for this season. Um, There's a lot of question marks with them, but the one thing that's not a question mark, as we all know of, is their offense. I mean, man, oh man, this offense is good. It's so, so good. There's so much sheer amount of talent on this team. Jonah Heim, Nathaniel Lowe, Marcus Semien, Corey Seager, Josh Young, who is hurt, but st- when there is very great, you have uh, you have Robbie Grossman, who just acquired, who is a good depth piece, Leo Tavares, Dolis Garcia, Wyatt Langford, who is hurt and was underperforming, but uh, still ended up being uh, st- still is a player I'm very high on for the future. Uh, Evan Carter, I'm not sure if I mentioned him, but yeah, he's doing well. Dolis Garcia, as I mentioned, so there's a lot of talent for the Rangers' offense, and that is mainly the reason why people aren't too worried for this pitching staff and what's happening with them right now. I mean, they won the World Series last year as well, so it's not like they're just some bum team that kind of, you know, is uh, figuring it out. But uh, yeah, overall, with the Rangers, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with them this year. The AL West is a really is very very different from past years. I mean. The Astros, of course, we talked about them. They're in last place in the in the AL West, and it's not last place for the first week of the season. No, they're in last place by a game and a half, and they're twelve and twenty-four. 
like ooh, like it's it's a it's a big difference for the AOS in the past, you know. So I think that's something to look at. The Mariners are still a really good team, but they do have some offensive question marks. The A's, I, I don't believe in the A's still, I'm sorry. I understand they've been doing well, they've been, you know, doing good, but at the same time, I'm just, I just, I just don't believe in them still. That the A's, like you know, it's just maybe it's a, a psychological thing where it's like the A's cannot be good, and after all the crap they've gone through with their franchise and their organization and their teams, so maybe it's just that. But overall, it's going to be very interesting to see how the Rangers do approach the rest of the season and what does end up happening with them. It'll be interesting to see what happens with Scherzer. He's obviously not the same actor as we've known from past years, but he still is a quality pitcher, still is a guy that, when he's on the mound, is very good, is an intimidating presence, has that pedigree, has that name. Even if he becomes washed up in his later years or even is washed up this year when he comes back, there's still going to be that level of respect that um, comes with the name like Max Scherzer, a first ballot Hall of Famer, a three-time Cy Young winner, one of the greatest pitchers in the history of baseball. I don't think I'm stepping on any toes by saying that, so... There is that with the Rangers, and I think just getting more pitching depth back is very helpful. It's going to be interesting to see what Scherzer looks like when he comes back. It's going to be very, it's going to be super interesting to see what happens when Degrom comes back. I'm very interested in Tyler Malley. That's another guy um, I think is going to be a big part of this Rangers team when he does come back. So, yeah, just overall very excited to watch this team, and very interested to just see what does end up happening with them, and just to end up watching them in general so yeah um it's going to be an interesting storyline for the rest of this year with texas seeing what happens with their pitching seeing what happens with their overall core and where they do finish in the al west that's something that again i'm very intrigued to see it's one of the most interesting storylines all of baseball this year and just super excited i mean the rangers could be on a world series hangover quote unquote they're not right now i mean they're not playing maybe as great as some people expected them but they're still doing well. They're still first in that division. So, I mean, that's really nothing to cough at. One thing I'm really interested, though, in is Wyatt Langford. Again, if you've watched the show for a little while now, you know that I am huge on Wyatt Langford. I think he is one of the premier prospects in baseball. He's going to be a future superstar in this league. I love I love his hitting. I love his offensive prowess. I, I love just how he approaches the bats. I think he's an elite prospect. And that was a guy I was expecting um, to help this Rangers team a lot. And I looked at this Rangers team preseason, and I was like, they're, they're not that good. Their rotation, uh, lo- you know, just lost Jordan Montgomery. They lost Jordan Montgomery, which is a big loss. Um, Max Scherzer was hurt. Jake DeGrom was hurt. Tyler Malley was hurt. I was like, this rotation's pretty overrated. Um, this offense is great, but I don't like the rotation. I don't really like the bullpen. I'm just not that high in them. But I thought about it more, and I ended up did putting them. I did end up putting them in my playoff predictions video I had them as either the fifth or sixth seed of the American League and the reason I did that was a lot because of Wyatt Langford and this young hitting core you have him you have Evan Carter you had Josh Young before he got hurt Nathaniel Lowe I don't know if Adolis Garcia is considered young at this point but you had him you have him so I think that the the point I'm trying to make for the Rangers right now is I think their offensive core has to be so good that they're out that they're um, it doesn't matter what the pitching is like because I don't think it's going to be that good this season. I think it's already been pretty rough, so it's just going to be an interesting thing that I am going to follow and going to and and end up going to uh, see for this season. So, uh, yeah, definitely something that is interesting to follow. Again, the Rangers are a very intriguing team, a team that um, I'm following a lot throughout the season. Um, is going to um, be very, very, just very, very. Um, I don't want to keep saying interesting or intriguing, but you know, basically that for the rest of the season, someone, um, some, uh, you know, someone I'm really looking at uh, that could either surprise a lot of people or uh, kind of go down in flames. So they're going to have a very interesting season, and there's a lot of good teams in the AL this year, and it'll be interesting to see where they do end up finishing for this year. So uh, yeah, that is uh, that is my third segment here talking about the Texas Rangers, uh, plus the match are set back for this team. We'll be going to our fourth and final segment, which is going to be talking about just some general news stories around the league and uh, some stuff I want to talk about. So, uh, yeah, we're going over that, and we'll uh, see you after the break. So uh, thanks, and bye.